finally, we've gotten the story of Morris Day from Morris himself. Hey everybody, welcome back to Prince's Friend, exploring music through Prince. Today, uh, I actually have a much anticipated book review for you all because this is a book that I've been reading for the last week or so. Uh, I did go out of town last weekend and I read it on the plane a lot and then I finished it actually just before sitting down to record this video. And obviously the book that I'm talking about is On Time by Morris Day with David Wrights. Or Ritz, I'm not exactly sure. It looks like this, so I'll go ahead and start off by saying it's actually a really great and entertaining book. And I don't do a lot of book reviews here because obviously this is a video format, so sometimes that stuff doesn't really translate well to YouTube, but I do want to give this book props. So I'm gonna do it the way that I did a couple of other reviews that I've done. The first is I'm gonna talk about the book itself and its composition, what it all entails. Then I'm gonna talk about some key things that I learned or got from the book that I really liked. And then I'm going to talk about a few things that possibly could have been better or could have been changed to make it appeal more to me, really. And everything that I discuss in this video and any video that we do here at Prince's Friend is always up for debate, so don't forget to leave a comment with your thoughts on the book, what you think of this review, and don't forget to hit like, subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell notification so you always know when we put up a new video. So first let's go ahead and talk about the book itself. While you can buy it on Kindle, the copy that I got is this copy right here. And it is a matte finish. It has a dust cover here, so you can see that. Um, it's really cool because it actually does detail some stuff. It's got this really cool picture of Morris Day, which obviously is kind of the Morris that we all know. But the cool thing about this book is that we get to know the Morris that exists outside of that persona that we've all become familiar with. Um, on the back, obviously, also has a really cool picture of him sitting there. Uh, I mean, it's really hard for Morris Day to not look cool, so I mean, that's just him. The book itself is 206 pages of written material, with about 10 blank pages at the end, which is weird. And the book sells for $27 in the US, $34 Canadian dollars. It does feature a few pictures of Morris Day and Prince in there, but they're ones that most of us have seen. I thought it was actually pretty cool though to see more pictures of Morris Day himself, ones when he was like a little kid, uh, and some, you know, when he was around Prince and his era, and then also some afterwards. So that was actually really fun to see kind of his own evolution there. Being that I'm a publisher myself, reading the book, of course I'm always looking for mistakes and things like that. I have to say, I didn't really find any. Um, there were only maybe one or two small, small typos that were actually kind of even forgivable. <laughs> but for the most part, I think that they really put this book through the ringer and was able to really make it sing. Any, and any issues that they might have had with any grammar or whatever was mostly just because Morse Day was talking and it, a lot of it seemed to be in his voice, which was fine. Now let's go ahead and get into the book itself, which is obviously what you're here for in the review. I'm gonna try to not give away too many spoilers or anything for the book. I don't want this book review to invalidate the need to purchase the book and read it yourself. But uh, there, he goes into some heavy stuff here. The biggest thing is that he starts the book off talking about Prince and why Prince is super important to his life, why Prince needed to be part of the book. And what we get with that is actually a really cool kind of writing device that Morse Day uses in order to get some interesting character and conflict in the book where actually that stuff might not actually exist had he not introduced this into it. So what he does at the very beginning is he says, hey, this book is about me, but it's also about Prince because without Prince there is no me. So I'm going to channel the spirit of Prince. And he says, but I can't actually channel spirits. It's just that voice in my head that this is what I think Prince would say. And honestly, it's a really cool way to write this book. And he uses it to really great effect because whenever he kind of starts going on a rant and he sounds like he is so sure of himself, the spirit of Prince, you know, him writing, and it's in a different font, will come in and say, that's not necessarily how that went down. 
And you guys know me, I actually really love to debate. I like to ask questions, even if I already know the answer, I wanna know what the other person thinks the answer is. So what he uses the Prince voice for is almost to be his own devil's advocate. So he'll say something like, yeah, and Prince did this and this and this, and Prince is just like, you don't know what I was thinking. And he goes, you're right, I'm actually just talking about what I saw. And he's just like, I know, so like, shut up. And he'll be like, well, fine, I might do that. And it's like, <laughs> there's like a fun exchange. That was not an example out of the book again. I'm gonna try and keep this as spoiler free as possible. But there's some really good stuff with the exchanges that he uses between him and Prince and whatnot. And he uses that to good effect, I think. There are a couple of places where it is slightly overused, but I will give it to him, he's fine. There is another voice or character in the book, and that is the, the voice of Morris Day. He paraphrases it as MD, which is the Morris Day that is the character that Prince and he kind of created, which is technically Prince's alter ego, which is all narcissistic and whatnot, versus the actual Morris Day. So the book is Morris Day, but it's also Morris Day having a conversation with Prince, what he thinks Prince might think or say about the things that he's talking about in the book, but also a conversation with, I guess, kind of his dark side. And it's a cool way to just kind of cement that this book will be very different from all the other books that you will read from anybody coming out of Prince's camp. So a few of the big highlights for me, and I'll go ahead and say that I'm going to spoil a couple of things here, but it might be stuff you guys already know. But I do want to go ahead and let you know that I wasn't really big into Morse Day in the time and all of that stuff in Prince's early days. Again, I'm a, I got in at Graffiti Bridge, so that was my first introduction to the time. And going back, I was like, you know, they're a good band. I really like them, but I didn't delve too deep. Honestly, most of the stuff that I've learned about the time has come from my research when I'm doing reviews and stuff for this channel. So that's where I'm coming from with this. So some of the stuff you guys might already know, but obviously he talks a lot about how he started, how he met Prince and how he got into Grand Central, which the story, it kind of lines up with what I've heard already. He talks about how he ended up getting the time together, and that one was slightly different than what I had heard, but it's cool to hear it straight from his mouth of how the time actually came to be and how he and Prince kind of worked in the studio. That stuff was actually a lot of fun. But one thing I didn't know was the fact that he was kind of um, an addict. He was addicted to cocaine and drugs and alcohol and all that stuff when he was younger. Um, back when he was around Purple Rain days and whatnot, he kind of got full of himself and he started kind of, you know, going down that road. You know, it's crazy because like, I actually went back after uh, reading sections of the book, I was like, well, let me go watch a couple of scenes in Purple Rain. And it's so funny because he talks vividly about that period of time where he was, you know, doing all these drugs and staying up all night and having fights with Prince because he couldn't make it to set on time, you know, being told constantly to be serious about the movie and his role, but also being told that he needs to play up his playful side and make as many jokes as he can. And half of the stuff in the movie that Morse Day and Jerome and all of them say are apparently improvised. It's like stuff like that. I really like the story as it kind of evolves as like how he and Prince started to kind of start clashing even in those earlier days. And that part for me, I think was extra revelatory that I was like, oh wow, like I just learned something about Morris Day. After he left Prince's camp, he actually starts kind of going through his personal life and what was going on with his with his wives and his kids. And again, I'm not gonna spoil any of that stuff, but he does actually kind of go into, he almost reviews his own albums, which is pretty fun for me, being somebody who has gone through and reviewed his albums. Funny enough, his reviews of his own albums are pretty close to the reviews that I've done for his albums. Um, so you should probably go check my reviews out for that album and you will you will have read the book a little bit, I guess, a little bit. But yeah, but every album tells that story. It tells the story of that person in that frame of mind at that time. And it's interesting in the book because he is saying like, I'm looking back at my lyrics I wrote 30 years ago and I am blowing myself away because I didn't even realize how important that song was to me at the time and all that stuff. So it's, it's really, really interesting. I do want to also say that he definitely gives big props to Prince, but not only Prince, he gives big props to pretty much everybody who helped him, his, his mom, his sister, he gives, he gives huge props to everybody in the time. And I think that the book overall, like I said, it does seem like it's gonna end on a downer note, 
but he then kind of picks it up and he's like, okay, let's, let's, let's fix this. Let's fix this because we don't want this to end that way. So I'll say those are a lot of the bigger, more positive things. The element of storytelling there is superb. I don't know how much of that was David Ritz, but I think the two of them together, I think they wrote a pretty stellar autobiography, which just kind of sets up for the next stage for Morris Day, because it seems like it's the end, but he's still around and he's still kicking and he's still making music, he's still doing things. Kind of going into a few of the, um, the bad things about the book, um, there really weren't a lot, honestly. Um, again, kind of any grammatical things was just kind of him talking in his voice. And every so often, I felt like the other voices invaded a little too much. Um, I think my biggest gripe is the fact that I think people, when reading this book, and I saw a lot of comments and tweets and whatnot, were taking what he was saying in Prince's voice as Prince saying those things, but we have to understand while reading the book that everything is from Morris Day's point of view. And specifically, I want to call out one specific spot in the book that everybody's kind of going on about. Apparently in this book, it revealed that Pop Life was about Morris Day. And Morris Day has a conversation with Prince in the book about that. But again, this whole book is Morse Day's point of view. Even anything that Prince says in the book is what Morse Day thinks Prince would say in that moment. So there is an actual section where the Prince voice in the book says, hey, I never told you this before, but I wrote Pop Life for you. And Morse Day responds with, I know, and you know what, I didn't realize it at the time that that was your way of reaching out to me. And Prince's voice was just like, but I was thinking about you. And it was a nice, sweet moment. But Morse Day thinking that Pop Life was about him doesn't necessarily mean that Pop Life was about him. And I'm not saying that it wasn't. I'm just saying that's not proof in and of itself. And writing with this sort of technique of kind of being possessed by another person and kind of putting words in their mouth a little bit, it does also come with the responsibility to not misrepresent anything. And I think that they did a really good job through all the rest of the book with that. And I think that was the only part that seemed to kind of step over that line into assumptions now being kind of claimed like they were real. Otherwise, I thought it was a really unique take on how to write an autobiography, so I have no other complaints about that portion. And the next thing isn't necessarily a negative for me, but I do just want to throw it out there that if you read this book, you're going to read some negative things about Prince. The relationship between Prince and Morris Day was not without its tension and its conflict, and they never came to blows, as um, the book kind of says, like, man, he was lucky I couldn't find him that one day. But, <laughs> but it does detail, from Morris's perspective, a lot of instances where Prince was, I mean, Prince did him wrong. I mean, just to be quite honest. And again, I have no reason to disbelieve anything in this book as being like Morris's truth. And there's always two sides to every story, but this side, Eh, kind of made Prince look like a jerk some of the time. So if you aren't interested in reading a book that is going to cast a negative light on Prince in any way, then you might not want to read this book. But it's all, but you can also tell that it's all done with love, kind of similar to the Maite book where, yeah, there were some points where it was dark in their relationship, but the book was written from a place of love, and I feel like that was definitely the case here with On Time. I think my only other gripe is like 206 pages, that's a really solid book but it did actually leave me wanting more, which I guess is a positive and a negative. Um, I really wanted to hear more about his story and hear more about what's going on there. So, and I did do this book review without having watched any of the other interviews that are on YouTube and stuff, because I didn't want to dilute the information in the book with stuff that he might say in an interview. But it's a really, really good book, and I would suggest that everybody go out and get it. There will be a link in the description. If you haven't already picked up your copy, definitely click the link in the description. You can go get it. I would definitely give this book five stars. I just think On Time was just a great autobiography. It was about a man who did have a very interesting life, but he didn't try to make himself this big thing like, and oh, and I never needed Prince ever. It's just like, no, he's like, Prince is the biggest influence on all of my life, and here's why. It's about me, though. It's not about Prince, but it is also. So it was an interesting book. But again, don't forget to put in the comments what you thought about this book. 
Let's discuss it down below. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification. Check us out on patreon.com slash princessfriend if you want to help support the channel directly. And if anybody knows Morris or his agent or anybody and you can get in contact with him, tell him I want to do an interview. Otherwise, may you live to see the dawn. I love you all.